first of all, a new school year just right around the corner. What, what would you like to say to students, to parents about this new school year? I want uh, families and students to know that I'm excited to welcome them back for the new school year. Uh, it's already off to a great start. As we announced, we're fully staffed in terms of our bus drivers. And this time last year, uh, bus was all the buzz. And that means that this year we get to focus on the basics, reading, math, and ensuring that our students graduate life ready. So I'm ready to kick it off on a very good note. Okay, great. Now, what are some of the big changes ahead that, that families and students need to know about? The biggest change that families need to know about right now is our shift to late start Mondays. What does that mean? That means that every Monday, school will start an hour later um, than it typically does, only on Mondays. Bus transportation will also begin an hour later. Um, so if you're a bus student, just get on the bus an hour later. Uh, but we understand that some families may need to drop off their child at the same time consistently. Um, we want to make sure that our buildings are open at the same time, but I do want the community to understand that this is an exciting change for ASD because that means that every week teachers will get an hour of professional learning. They'll get to look at data, talk about students, and become strong instructional leaders. And that's what we need to achieve our goals as a district. So this is a great investment of time. And also, um, tell us a little bit more about why those learning communities, how they can benefit students. Has there been some research in that? Sure, so I'm a strong believer, and the research supports it, that professional learning should be a set of ongoing experiences, not an event that just happens one day a year. That's not how anybody learns. So this is actually something that we've been doing in ASD for a number of years. At our high schools, we've always had late start Mondays, or at least for the past few years. So what we're doing is expanding that to our elementary schools and middle schools. Um, our board goals really look at early reading proficiency. So before, our teachers didn't have an hour every week to talk about students and talk about how to use their curriculum. And this change will allow them to have those conversations with their colleagues, which as a former teacher, I can attest, is a really good use of time. Mm -hmm. What about parents who have concerns about how it will impact them? Is the district willing to work with them? Tell us a little bit more about that. Sure, so one of the first things that uh, we announced after the passage of PLCs on Late Start Mondays was that we'll keep our buildings open. Uh, we want to make sure that if a family needs to drop off their student at the same time, that they can do that. With that said, the teachers will be engaged in professional learning communities, but staff um, who are not instructional staff will be there to supervise the students for that hour. Uh, additionally, I've deployed the district office to all of the elementary schools, at least for the first month month so we can look at data and we can see which schools have a high need for extra adults in the morning to supervise students. I'll be doing it personally uh, along with all of my leadership team because we need to understand how we can best support families. Okay, And you want families to know that this, the, 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 they don't need to worry about their children being unsupervised. I mean, that's been taken into account. That's right. We will have staff to supervise the students if a family elects to drop their student off an hour later. Okay. Um, any other changes that you wanted to talk about? Uh, one of our other big changes that uh, families will uh, perhaps notice is that we've adopted a new ELA curriculum, K-3. So recently the state passed the Alaska Reads Act uh, and the new curriculum will ensure that we're completely aligned with the state when it comes to ensuring we have strong reading instruction in our schools. So that's another change that will impact K-3, through three, which is very important because our board goal on reading proficiency is around K-3 students. So this is a good strategic move and we hope that um, in tandem with professional learning communities will allow us to improve reading outcomes for students. When do you think we might see some of those scores in CHUP? <laughs> That uh, depends on the state. Uh, the state actually hasn't released the test scores from last year, so we're eagerly awaiting that data because that'll set the baseline for our five-year strategic plan. Um, but uh, what ASD does is implement screeners throughout the year so that every month or so we have a sense as to our students progressing. Do they need extra support? And professional learning communities are a great opportunity for teachers to look at that data in real time so they can start supporting students and course correcting in lifetime. And at the district level, um, the board receives a briefing on our board goals every month, and me and my leadership team are talking about it every week. So there are a lot of eyes on reading proficiency data uh, because we know that that's key for students to graduate life ready.
Mm -hmm. Now nationally, and, and to some extent in the district as well, absenteeism has been a, a big issue. What are, your, what are your thoughts on that? Is there any, you know, we won't have the numbers quite yet about this year, but any, any thoughts on how to tackle that? Yeah, I believe that if a student is not in school, they can't learn to their fullest potential. So we want to support our families to get to school. I'm very thankful that we have a full fleet of bus drivers um, on our Team ASD uh, this coming year. We don't want transportation to be the reason that a student can't get to school, but we also expect principals to be looking at the data and seeing trends as to who's not showing up to their buildings and to reach out to families, engage them, and provide supports as needed to ensure that their families are supported to send their students to school consistently every day unless they're feeling sick, of course. Mm -hmm. And a another sort of health note, of course, nationally and here in Alaska, drug overdoses. They've been a big issue. I understand that the district is supplying Narcan now at all schools. Can you talk a little bit about that? Just kind of what the, the thought is there? Sure. So at a high level, uh, we do have reactive steps, um, such as Narcan, that ensures that if a student has overdosed, that they can be supported. But on um, the flip side, we're also being proactive in making sure that staff and students are trained on the dangers of fentanyl, um, because we don't want students to be in that situation where they overdose. It's a very serious issue, and we want our students to be aware that they need to do whatever it takes to ensure they're not in a situation where they ingest uh, an illegal substance. Mm -hmm. Okay. The budget, big, big changes since the last time we talked to you. The governor has now vetoed some of the funding that uh, we were anticipating. How much of an issue is that for ASD and, you know, will we be feeling the impacts this year? Sure. So to recap, the legislature came together and across party lines voted for the largest um, or one of the most historic largest increases in school funding in Alaska's history. Um, many districts, including ASD, were very excited about that one-time funding. And unfortunately, the governor took it upon himself to veto half of that money. What does that mean for ASD? Business as usual this school year. The ASD board and I passed a balanced budget back in January based on the revenue that we had, not the revenue that we projected. Unfortunately, not all districts were able to do that, and they were really counting on that funding. And as a result, there are districts around the state that are having to uh, reduce staff and dip into their emergency savings, which is not a scenario that ASD ever wants to be in. So that means, as superintendent, I am committed to recommending a balanced budget based on the revenue that we have not the revenue that we expect. So that means that going into the next fiscal year, we're looking at a deficit over $80 million. And a lot of families may wonder, why does the deficit keep increasing? Remember the bus transportation crisis last year. How did we get out of it? We invested in our talent. We raised the wages by over 20% for our bus drivers, and we offered them summer jobs. And that's just one employee group. There are other employee groups as well we're competing nationally um, for talent. Uh, statewide, there are out-migration challenges that are hurting schools' impact to attract talent. So we need to invest in our people, otherwise we won't have people in our schools. So for that reason, the cost of doing business in ASD has gone up because we want to pay fair wages to our bus drivers and custodians and food service workers. That needs to be the strategy moving forward but what that means is that I'm tasked with thinking about a multi-year plan to right-size the district and to ensure that we're financially sustainable. Um, and to, of course, advocate for sensible education funding changes in Juneau. But I will always budget based on the revenue that I have now today, not based on revenue that I'm hoping for in the next legislative session. Mm. Anything else that you want folks to know? And the community may be wondering about school closures. When will that conversation happen again? Uh, I will say that I do not anticipate releasing names of schools to be closed um, in October like I did last year. But that's only because I want to take more time to engage the community in what that process looks like. But the reality is, due to out-migration, and enrollment projections uh, nationwide, including in Alaska, we do need to right size our operational footprint, but I wanna give the community time to become engaged in that process so that I can roll out a three to five year plan for how ASD will be right sized so that we're financially sustainable. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else in particular you'd like to share? I'm excited to welcome back our students and families on Thursday.